My name's Tom Third. I'm uh, primarily a television composer. I'm working on a new project, a television series, uh, where the, the mandate is to do an entirely electronic score. So when this new project came along, um, I, uh, I decided I wanted to gear up and, and, and try and approach it in a way that was uh, not so computer-based and more like a sort of old-school um, electronic musician style. When I started on this show, I went out and got a phenol um, for a couple of reasons. It was, it's, uh, it's modular, but it's, uh, it's very quick to patch. It's got this great MIDI converter. So for me to integrate it into my workflow, I can just clock it to my computer and, um, and just record huge swaths of, of crazy performance and of uh, just me fiddling around and repatching on the fly and I might record for two hours. And then because I need to do a lot of repeatable stuff as part of this scoring process, I can take these big long performances and then just start cutting them up into things. And I've just been building my own loop library that's sort of a phenol feast of madness. So I was recording CDs for a long time and that was, that was a great process because you kind of have to look inward and just figure out what kind of music is in your heart and then, and then do that stuff. But one of the reasons I became, I was always sort of a, a film head, and one of the reasons I started to pursue scoring work was that uh, it's hard. It's really difficult and it, it takes you outside of sort of songwriting mode and into uh, script mode and, and dialogue mode. You're starting to write music that has to coexist with the, the emotions and, the, and the, the dialogue on screen. It gets you kind of off the grid a little bit in terms of you're not sort of thinking about tempo so much as you are thinking about beats in the scene and that kind of thing. We're, we're often looking for kind of a signature sound, which you hear, you know, in te television series all the time where you'll, you'll go, oh, that's that sound that's in that show, or that's the opening of Mad Men, that RG, RJD2 track. Um, or, um, or Breaking Bad that has this kind of twangy guitar. So we're often sort of tasked with finding something that makes this television series sound like no other television series. It's been specifically said we want something electronic, and I go, great. And, and it was kind of housey. They wanted kind of a, a housey approach, this kind of four on the floor, kind of pulse groove thing. And I like that idea, but I also want to take it in a much crazier place. And so that was when I thought what I need to do is change my working process. If I just sit at the machine, at the computer and just do house tracks, it's just going to sound like everybody else's house tracks. I need to get into another crazy space. And then I'm really using Phenol as kind of a centerpiece to this. Um, I've got MIDI coming out of my computer going into Phenol. Um, and using the clock and the clock divider to kind of drive a lot of stuff. It's just kind of a very simple uh, MIDI to CV converter that kind of works without me having to think, which is also great. Um, and then the idea then will be I'll, I'll work with the computer just basically generating sync and clock. And I'll have the scene up here and I can kind of set a tempo to the scene that's kind of working, um, you know, with the beats and the dialogue and all of that kind of stuff and then just kind of freestyle. I had already demoed the thing in the store and I knew kind of within a few minutes when I heard how the filters were behaving. Because I thought, oh, this is such a cool idea. It's this great little mini modular. It's just exactly the right kind of thing to work quickly, but still have this level of unpredictability. That's just, for me, like just exactly the right place. The, the, some of the bigger stuff I have doesn't have that quickness to it. I can get some cool sounds out of it, but I can't work as quickly. And I find that's, that's, that's functionally useful just in order to maintain the television schedule. Um, but it's also just kind of neat in terms of like a creative workflow. Like you're not really impeded by like, oh, how come it's not the, the, you know, the tuning of the oscillators and how come that MIDI thing's not got the right tuning across the octave and all of that funny stuff that you fiddle with. This thing just kind of worked immediately. The whole thing about uh, synthesizers in general, to me, is not so much the oscillators or the sound of the filter. It's all about modulation, modulation, 
modulation. The more you can modulate stuff, the more complex the timbres can be. And so I've done all this sort of experimenting with this thing where I'll just have this like huge stack of connectors where I'm sending the same modulation source to all kinds of different uh, parameters. So everything's kind of like just warping and modulating. But then you start modulating that modulator. And then, so that modulator is, is, is it's warping, but it's being warped at the same time. And then you think, okay, there's probably a way I can start modulating the modulator that's modulating the modulators. And then just how intense can that be? You can literally take a single sine wave and just turn it into the most intensely complicated time, inver time variant madness that just never seems to repeat how, uh, how to describe that sound. It's a modular synthesis sound. The plugins just don't go to that place, even the very best ones. They just, even when I try and set that stuff up on the computer, I can't kind of get that weird variability. The amount of circuit modeling or something to get there, I just think is beyond what programmers are up to, even at this point. I mean, there's some great emulations of the Mini Moog that are, I think, indistinguishable from the real thing, but, but not at the boundary conditions, not at these weird states where the filters are wide open or closed down, or, or when you've got this crazy modulation stuff where things are just bubbling and freaking out. That's the stuff that I want to capture and have in this series, because I, I just don't think people are, are, are doing it yet.